Hey everyone. So I am Phil, as she mentioned. Um, I come from a city called San Diego, California. I don't know if you all know where that is. Uh, it's the southernmost city in California. I came here to share some practical marketing tips with you guys. So one of the main um, problems that I generally run into with people in the software industry is they have the availability to code, not a bad thing, but the problem to actually get people to use their software or contribute to their software becomes a problem for them to be able to grow to any scalable amount. So what that comes down to is going to be that you need to make people informed about what you have, what you have to offer. So we're gonna to talk today about what is your software, the customer journey that is spent as the new user comes to discover your open source or whatever product, uh, types of marketing options you can do to get people to become informed of your software, and then some practical steps and action items you can take home. So I want you to think of software that you use every day or maybe you are contributing to here in the open source community. If you can't think of anything specifically, think of Ubuntu or maybe your favorite application on Ubuntu. Now, if somebody asks you, what does your software do? Answer that in your mind right now. Think to yourself. So if someone says, what does Ubuntu do? What is your answer generally going to be? Someone, if no one answers, if no one raises their hand, I'm going to call on someone, just point at you. What, what does Ubuntu do? Partially. So what you want to do when answering the question to any prospective person after you develop software to what does your software do is solving a problem. You need to be able to make sure that when you tell somebody what your software is doing that you are producing is the problem that it solves. Think of any major tech company in the world and users are using their product not based on exactly what it does, but based on the problems that it solves. People take rideshare apps, people use Airbnb, people take certain opportunities from certain apps, people use certain pieces of software because it enhances their life and solves a problem that they have. And so what you need to do is figure out what that problem is that you are solving with your software, measure who needs to use it, contact them and repeat that information. What you're gonna get with something like this when you do measure, contact, repeat is a term that is called North Star Metric. If you're gonna take anything from that, write that down, North Star Metric. What that is, is the measurable, actionable, definable metric you can use to get more users onto your software. So from there, there's multiple methods you can do which is going to get people using your software. Um, and so one of the first methods is you can do low-cost advertising. Um, so, and you can run these in a pretty simple low-cost way. I have some companies that I run advertising for on Facebook and Google at about 55 cents per click you can convert from US dollars in your head. Um, and Google ads at about a dollar and a half per click. And with Google advertising, uh, if you are a nonprofit or your software community group, what have you, is a nonprofit, in a vast majority of countries, you actually can qualify for free ad credit. I know in the US, you get about $10,000 a month in free ad credit if you're a nonprofit and you fill out a form called a 501c3 to do that. It's different in every country. Google has their list of things. I can point that out to you after the talk. It's pretty, pretty good. Um, Facebook has that, and you can set up some fairly basic general specifications for that, and you can get much more in-depth with who you're targeting, who you're marketing to, and where they come from with Facebook. I can talk to you about that after the presentation, which is something that is worth considering. Um, and that's something that you wanna look into. And additionally, you can look into many other avenues you think are worth it.
But a lot of the other larger internet companies, you have to have a lot of budget to spend these things. You can spend $5 a day on all of these websites right here on your own for your own loco community even. You can have it to be where someone searches Ubuntu Lisbon and automatically the loco page is going to be the first thing that comes up. It's going to be pretty affordable too because I highly doubt anyone else is bidding on those types of things too. So that's worth considering. Um, so what you want to do additionally, I already mentioned nonprofit ads are basically going to be free. That's the website you want to go to. Um, change your pictures and your copy regularly because we all know we've been on Twitter, Facebook, and whatever, and we see the same advertisement for six months straight and we don't care at that point and then you're just wasting your money. Um, additionally, another thing you can do is called content marketing with blogs. So what I mean by that specifically is you need to write content that is going to, again, solve a problem. Your article title needs to be something of item we have that we are marketing, we are selling you, solving the problem. So um, what that can be is anything from how Ubuntu enhances this part, how listening to music is more enjoyable on it. Um, you can go down and you can start typing some of the more um, step style blog, which would be four steps, five steps to increase your knowledge of Ubuntu, five steps to develop this app, Five steps to write better documentation. Tip, though, when you see those types of things, if you write a, if you put an odd number instead of an even number, you get a higher click rate. It means more people are going to click on your ad, which is interesting. So if you're trying to write a blog for your loco and you're putting ten ways you can get involved in the community, you're going to get a lower click rate. I'm not entirely sure why than if you put eleven. And I believe it's because people think you're a little more intentional in that number, but you don't need to tell them you weren't. Um, SEO is another thing I could talk for hours on, which we don't need to, but basic thing, you need to figure out what keywords people are searching for, and you need to put those in there. You guys know what backlinks are? Cool. Look that up. So, um, backlinks is why you want to be writing a blog in the first place, and what that's going to do is what that's going to do is when you write your blog five steps to make Ubuntu work for you. You put it on your site. Companies, people that have websites that are more important than yours are going to read them and link them back on their site, on their social media, and that's going to rank you higher in Google search engine optimization algorithm. Uh, this is also a great place for community input. And what I mean by that is you're, you have a lot of people that are not technical probably wanting to help out with your community or a lot of people that um, are just general users looking for some way to share the stuff that they're doing. Community input to have them write a blog is good. You can go through and you can change the keywords. You can make a long form content template. Long form means um, longest form that you can possibly, if, I want to say it's like four to 5,000 words is an ideal post for a blog. It might have changed in the past couple months. But what you're going to want to do is probably make a template for your users. I've done that before. And then you can get as many people as you want writing from your community various ways to get involved. It might be you. You might be the only person doing it. And that kind of sucks for the first few months. But you're going to find people with your blog that you're writing to help you start building out your community help more people get involved in your software. Um, so one of the things that this really enhances is your ability to create more social media. A large percentage of you may hate social media, Facebook, Twitter, all of them and the like, but that's where people exist on the internet today to get their attention. And that's where you're going to grow your user base, and that's where you're going to be able to find people who have the same interest as you. Um, so my recommendation, if you, are, if you have any sort of a community you're running with social media, is to use a social media management platform. Um, what that's going to allow you to do is make 200 posts in the course of an hour, about a course of a day, and schedule them for every single consecutive hour that you want. 
Uh, this is a good place that you can do sort of um, testing to where you want to figure out what time of day is going to get more of a uh, open rate on the articles you're putting and all that sort of stuff. Um, Hootsuite's a pretty sweet example. It's uh, it doesn't cost anything for the, and you can schedule thirty posts at a time. And I want to say it costs, at least in the states, it's ten dollars a month for a lot more than that, which is fairly affordable for a lot of us. Uh, Buffer is pretty good. Check that out. There's dozens of them at the end of the day, but I can talk with you guys later if any of you guys want some practical help. <clears throat> um, and we can look at that at a later time. Um, so, one of the more interesting things, though, is once you're growing out your community, your product, your user base, whatever software you have, and this is intentionally somewhat broad, is you're going to get important people that you want to get more information out to. So, you're going to want to start emailing. Um, how many of you guys like email lists? Cool. Cool. Um, so what I like about email lists is not inherently as an amazing way to get the word out for your information. You can, but half the time it just goes to people's spam folders these days. Um, but it gives you emails that then you can, uh, run back and filter for your advertisements. So you can take those emails and you put it in your EULA that you're going to advertise to them and let them know some of the actions that you're doing in your software. Or you can take that and you can make what's called a Facebook lookalike audience. And then you take Facebook's ad metrics and then it filters and targets people with similar interests to the people that are signing up to your email list if you have it in a large enough database. And that's pretty cool if you're into that. So where were we? Um... Then another thing to consider is called influencer marketing. If you guys have never heard of that, it's pretty basic. Um, find community members that are important in your community to start working on this. Um, you may have famous people in your community that you don't even know using your software that you're producing. If you're small time, probably not, but I guarantee there's people who are famous outside of Ubuntu using Ubuntu that don't talk about it. Track those types of people down that live in your city, have them shoot out a tweet, write a blog, put their name on it, and share it. More people are going to read it, and they'd probably be willing to do it. Something that's worth considering. I probably completely forget those types of people. Um, email tip is uh, uh, you drip campaigns. You can look into those, which is essentially that's more advertising, which is kind of spammy. I wouldn't recommend that entirely for you guys. Uh, but use a tool like MailChimp or SendGrid, those types of things, which are pretty basic. I think someone just bought SendGrid. I think Twilio bought them actually recently, so I don't know what they're doing. But I use MailChimp for most of my clients, and that sets up the availability because you can see the open and the read rate. Um, another thing you want to do, because no one wants to spam someone. Spamming people is kind of kind of rude. Um, you can filter all of your emails you're going to send to your users through something called a spam filter. And that's going to look for words which are going to spam people and not spam people. My recommendation, though, is to go in your, open up your email and look in your spam folder at the words that those companies are using considerably and just blacklist, the, blacklist those out of your vocabulary, which is going to create an easier time for you after you get about writing emails on a regular basis. <sighs> um, obviously, running events important. So, basic things. So, one of the things that I like to do, obviously, events is the culmination of a lot of the stuff you've been working on before if you're following these things. So, you can do workshops that are pretty good. Um, which sets up the availability to um, sort of be it anything you want. Be that if you're a lot or a Ubuntu users group, you can have an install fest, like I think Rudy was talking about here this morning. You can set up um, meetups, grab a beer with your friends, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
webinars are good. Just hang out um, on the internet is something that I have really worked on attracting and getting set up. Um, and that works really well. How many of you guys go to, I mean, you guys go to meetups, obviously. It's that type of thing. But the point being, why you want to run all of these things is because then when you do these types of information, you have that audience, which is going to be likely to want to come to your events. Because if all you're doing is starting off making the event, you have no audience to market it to. If you don't have an audience to market it to because you're not doing social media, email, and blogging, all you're going to have is dedicated users, the same 10 people that meet up every single week and just become a group of friends and talk about themselves. And that's fine. That's fine. Don't get me wrong. But I believe the entire point of growing your technology should be attracting new people. Maybe not even the technical people that want to come to this conference. Maybe even just people that are interested in using the product as an end user and having no knowledge of what programming is coming to your meetup, which is worth considering. Um, so where were we? But what you need to figure out when it comes to the software you're working on and growing it is something called the customer journey. Have you guys ever heard that before? Cool. So the customer journey is a, is a new term in business technology that um, sort of describes what I would call touch points, your new user, sales, whatever you want to, not, not sales and money, but you could, don't get me wrong, um, it, uses, it works for that too, um, to buy into the product that you are producing. So you need to remember awareness, interest, evolution, decision, and retention. And each one of these boxes, you can change some different words for it, but is going to have, and what you need to have tech, tech stack wise is key performance indicators. And what that means is when somebody becomes aware of your technical product, you need to figure out technically on your website, at the booth you're running, how you can, tr how you can get a hold of that and how you can know that they are now in your pipeline, if you will. So you can imagine that going from awareness, they see the ad, they see the, they see the booth you're running at any sort of festival, they see the interest, it tags their interest. They took the flyer home, they go to your website. Um, from there, they read the blog post. So you gotta, you gotta think of it like you excite, you educate, and then you sell. And so it, it, the evolution comes, the trial of the software. So don't think just because they've downloaded your software, you have a new user. If you have software downloads, if you have a million software downloads with a 90% uninstall rate, that's probably pretty bad. Um, so ask questions of the community. Maybe they go on, ask some questions into your Slack channel, your IRC channel. Uh, decision, and what I mean by decision is they've run through the trial, they've installed it, it works for them. That's not even done yet. Just because someone installs, that doesn't matter. Think of it um, to then only when they are a retention and they are retained as a software user of your product, does that matter? Uh, it's, I mean, from a monetary standpoint, they can sign the contract, but unless the money's in the bank, it doesn't matter. And they're not gonna, the money's not in the bank until they've gone ways to become probably what you guys would call community members. So my recommendation, if it's an open source product, start giving them jobs to do. If it's not, um, there's multiple ways you go about that. But what you need to figure out as a person, if you have your software product, is what each person, what happens along each one of these journeys for you and how you can figure out a way to track that and make sure that people are going along those steps. Google key performance indicators. It's actually pretty cool. Um, however, ideally what you need to have then, so once you track this down, you got to analyze, determine, scale, repeat. Remember that. Analyze, so you analyze. You figure out where your user is, determine where they came from and where they're going. Scale it, you know what scale means, and repeat it. 
unless the metric that you can figure out to figure out where your user is coming from is um, viewable and repeatable and scales, then it's not worth it. If it takes you hours to get one user, that's not going to scale, obviously. And so you need to figure out that method for your product that you're working on. So from that, action steps for the end of this. Uh, we went through multiple methods of things you can do in email, social media, blogging, purchasing advertisements, getting free advertisements. Uh, pick one method. Don't, if anything, I can tell you about marketing any sort of tech infrastructure. Don't spend, don't do 10 methods poorly. Do one method good and invest your, infrastructure, invest your time into that. You're busy developing the software. You don't have that much time in the first place. Get that set up. Uh, from there, you need to set up your measurements, and you need to repeat. This is something that you can, in theory, script, automate, and set up in some sort of a back end that you can monitor as time goes on. Um, and with that, uh, thank you for coming to the presentation. Uh, I will be around all week uh, for an hour, sorry, for hour-long marketing help. I'll sit down with you and I'll give you information on what you need, uh, help with growth, sales in your community, and plan growth for your own application. Thank you. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, come bug me afterwards. I'll be up here for a few minutes tearing down. So does anyone have any question? Okay, silent audience. Yes. Uh, hello. Regarding the social media platforms, yeah. what do you think uh, about Facebook specifically for uh, non... I, I think about Facebook is good for consumer products, but... If you target like uh, developers or open source communities or even business users, yeah. that's different. Is that a good platform for so, that I kind mean, of audience? Right. At the end of the day, you got to find your audience. So a lot of the software people are producing does have an end user, which is not a technical person, and Facebook is a great place for it. If it's B2B software, I've done LinkedIn advertisements before. I did for a while. I mean, you got to find your audience, but like, like I, I had a, I was helping with a tech stack that was that turned out moms was the target audience. So we put a couple thousand dollars into Pinterest and it worked out. But I mean, it, Facebook is just cheap, is what it boils down to. Like I've done Yelp before, and Yelp costs two and a half dollars per click, but which is more expensive than like the dollar I get on Facebook. But what it really boils down to is you, you have to figure out where they are, and that is a challenge, which, I mean, I would probably find 10 different places to put 20 bucks into and see what happens and then narrow it down to there. Yeah, uh, Twitter is not a bad option um, for people. It does not have as good of geo-targeting. In the States, you can target zip codes on Facebook, which is good which I like. Um, yeah, which, but if people are, if your audience is not there, then you're just shouting into the side of the wall and wasting your time, obviously. Um, but yeah, I like LinkedIn for B2B stuff too, and I'll do that occasionally. Yeah. So how do I make my software like so that people actually install it? Because what if they don't really know who I am? And, uh, well, I believe my software is useful, but how do I actually advertise that in such a way that I get the audience to install it? I mean, your software might not be useful, to be quite frank. It might be that if it's only useful to you, then it's, that's great, you're just making software for yourself. Um, but my recommendation for that is figure out a low-cost method for UI testing. Um, but if you want to attract new users specifically, I mean, a couple of the methods that I, work, that I mentioned were good. If, um, 
if you already are a developer that has an audience yourself, utilize your own social media to get it going and then funnel that down to whatever social media is taking place for the application in and of itself. Um, running a, make a short video that explains what that is and put it on the internet is pretty simple too. And by, by short, I mean one minute, two minutes tops. Yeah, short doesn't mean a half an hour. I'm going to give up after five minutes. Yeah, pretty basic stuff. But we can talk for 20 minutes afterwards happily. I can show me what you're doing and I'll show you what to do. Yeah. Insults even? I'll take the insults. Cool, thank you.